Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Planet Coaster where we get to try and expand upon our main street and actually get this thing kind of started a little bit more in the proper sense. We have the small bakery uh, hot cross buns to the left and then we're just going to gray box a rough shape out here to the right. Make sure it lines up to the path and try and see what we can do to get it to interact with the path a little bit and we'll see about also uh, making a tile set but also not because with tile sets what you run into if you try and make them too detailed is that you're going to get a lot of part clipping and you're going to get a lot of things kind of poking through the walls a little bit so i end up not doing that this episode so I'm kind of breaking my role a little bit or my general building process for something a little bit more slower so that I am able to get these three interiors well spaced enough to uh, give us a little bit more uh, proper room to work with on the inside, which is going to be good, I think, in the long run. But uh, here initially, it does take a, a bit more time than I wanted to uh, initially. But we're going to have you know, these three row homes, and they're gonna be fairly similar to each other. Uh, row homes tend to be fairly consistent across uh, the whole length of them, and but they are going to have some minor coloration differences just to keep it a little bit more interesting for my sake. If I sat there and built one giant building that was essentially the same all the way across, um, that's just kind of a boring thing to do for me, so I try and mix it up and uh, combine different elements in different, slightly different ways uh, for more of a believable style. Um, we're also gonna kind of lightly box in roughly where the uh, kind of backstage area is going to fit. Backstage areas are great for two reasons. Um, they will actually expand the interior space a little bit. You guys saw that with hot cross buns. Uh, a lot of that vendor space is actually the backstage area. And it's also kind of a nice free way to, uh, basically you can ignore the back side of the building, which is kind of convenient, uh, especially when you're doing things of this size. And it can take your mind off of uh, making sure the front and the back are symmetrical and they line up and everything's matching. It's just a, that little bit of time saver. So there is advantage to doing a backstage um, when you're doing just the front facade it's just less to really overall think about so with these row homes they're actually pretty tall you know three to four stories tall and um, because of their height we need to pick a more suitable building material than just wood and plaster so we're going to go with brick to the far left kind of more of a traditional red and you know currently trying out uh, you know a base tile set the thing with brick buildings is that they are very plain uh, especially the older kind of style um, you know kind of in the in Europe Northern Europe Denmark things like that they do have very plain qualities to them which is you know nothing against that I think that's perfectly uh, fine um, but it can make for um, a relatively boring build process because you you basically just get this flat wall of red so there's little things that you want to try and do to kind of break that up be that introduce archways which I'm trying out there or different frames for windows to make the windows interesting and so the walls can remain plain extending out the foundation making the foundation thicker at the bottom but I kind of do that trick on every building because I think it works fairly well in that sense. Uh, having the doors jut out from the walls, having other little juts from the walls themselves. And um, that's that's generally in how I'm going to go about breaking the surface up. Also, of course, with small vertical columns made of brick of a slightly different color than everything else currently it's a little too purple but you know colors and things can easily be updated as you go and get a little bit more of a better feeling for the overall structure and how things are going to work together that door here at the bottom is going to end up being replaced with an open door uh, very much uh, like the hot cross buns bakery 
but um, for now we're just kind of leaving it there as a placeholder so that I can kind of measure things out test out the looks of things see how it is all going to work in the long run and we have these additional little juts coming out uh, above the first floor extending into the second and third floor these are actually kind of wooden framed elements um, it, it's kind of an interesting thing to try when you are building these style homes um, you know when they do a heavy brick building occasionally you're going to get sections of wood in there um it's not a it's not a 100 percent kind of rule to follow but i think it's nice because one it breaks up the surface of the brick two it also provides a little bit more interior space than uh, you might have had otherwise especially if this was real life you know jutting out a building using wood because it's light um you can increase you know your square footage by one to two kind of feet fairly easily and then have it jut out a little bit farther as you go upwards one it, it also kind of makes the building look a little bit more dynamic a little bit more interesting and um i just like the progression of of that view also the the white supports the white timber frames around just brings the whole thing out in a, in a slightly different way than what we did in the ticket booth so it's similar yet different enough to keep uh, me interested and hopefully you guys interested in the overall build process. Now, all of these three row homes are gonna be fairly similar to these. Um, they're going to have the brick kind of backing to it. They're gonna have some thicker vertical columns. These are uh, buttresses technically, if you think about it. Uh, they're not flying buttresses by any means, but they do provide that uh, extra support in areas so that they can build taller and taller. Now, with that, we can easily copy and paste the wooden element over. Make sure, of course, it's the same height. You know, sometimes when you copy items in Planet Coaster, it kind of resets the height level a little bit. So that is something to definitely watch out for if you are kind of doing this copy-paste build method. We are also going to, uh, on the right side, this is actually more of a just pure window space, a uh, little bit more of the side of the building because the entrance is on the left, unlike um, the other two ones. And we can go ahead, thicken that base up a little bit. We're going to have a wider wooden upper story. Um, that will also help separate it from the brick on the left two buildings and the wider section because you're going to have variation uh, between the height of these three row homes you're going to have variation in terms of their width and you're, now you're going to get a variation in terms of their peaks as well so it's pretty interesting to try and mix and match uh, also try and mix and match new elements here and there you know everything in planet coaster is kind of a trial and error and oh you're always kind of learning what might work with each other there's a lot of pieces that i still haven't even touched in the game or haven't found a use for my style in particular so it's always good to go out and try things even though they might not necessarily make sense for example this little wooden kind of balcony thing I didn't, I don't really use this piece hardly ever, and I decided to use it as a little bit of a top of this stone support that is really heavy so that the bricks can actually carry up the sides. Uh, unlike the left side there where it's all wooden timber frame, this one here is that brick frame going up the side. So it's heavier, you need that a uh, little bit more of a grand support structure for it. And in general, it, I think it works out quite well. So this is one of those situations where trying out a piece, flip it upside down, stick it in a, in a different angle, see what kind of comes out of it. Uh, it's very similar to possibly just looking up at the sky, seeing shapes and clouds at that point, because you're just looking at abstract elements and your mind kind of fills in the gaps for you so it does work out we have a bay window up there we have uh, a few more windows 
trying to change the window count as you go up and down through the structure. You can see we have this central point where we have a nice wide single window, then it splits into two windows, and then we have three, and then back to one. So we have this transitional uh, element going up through the vertical, and I think that also helps try and break up the structure and keep it interesting and somewhat unique looking compared to everything else. White wooden timbers going across the peaks. And then here we can easily start dyeing the old roof tiles into a slightly more red color. Red, red roof tiles is one of those things that's pretty common throughout pretty much most buildings in history. If you take a look at any town or city that is uh, quite old, you're gonna see a lot of red roofing. Now, it is nothing wrong with uh, doing that. Uh, I, I am kind of, uh, one, a fan of the red roofing color. I think it's a great color to do, but um, you don't wanna try and do this too much. Um, for me personally, I think it gets a little repetitive. I mean, the bakery has a red roof. This new building has a red roof. So I want to try and use this kind of sparsely throughout the build going forward so that we just don't have a row of red. I mean, we even have a red sidewalk. So if I use it too much, it might just start bling and blending into the sidewalk from a distance and just might not work. So we'll keep an eye on it. And uh, hopefully you guys generally like the color palette of these buildings going forward. So other than that, we have this raised kind of platform on the other two row uh, homes. And these are, I guess, the way I'm trying to interact with the path. Instead of doing arches over the pathway like I do normally, um, I decided to try and keep the buildings flat faced as much as possible. You know, we do obviously have our variations going up and through the building, but um, I didn't want to have too many balconies just jutting out over the path because if you fall into the rut of using that trick over and over, it becomes very obvious as to that is your kind of one trick pony. So we are trying to break that up with just a simple raised path and foundation. And that'll also, when the guests are walking, that'll create a height difference in the guests by themselves. And I think that will be a pretty cool element to see as well. Here we're combining a door arch frame to a window to make a wide broad arched window. And those do look fairly nice. We're also using the side of one of the smaller windows to pr provide some decorative stonework. It's not really supportive, but uh, these things did exist here and there in some of these areas. They're almost as if they are fake windows. So they, they provide these lines that a window might provide without having to sacrifice the structural integrity of the building. Because when you add windows to a wall or surface, you really need to one, either increase the foundational width of the building, uh, add more buttressing, more supports in general to do that because you're opening up a surface. And that's what these things kind of provide. From a distance, it kind of looked like windows, but they're not. They're just kind of these decorative little squares drawn up on there. We're also gonna be changing the color of the windows here. We're going for white windows on this building with more of a tan shutter, uh, unlike the other one, which is kind of a dark wood window with a red shutter. And the reason we're going with kind of dark wood elements on this one or dark stone is because this is going to have a dark roof and the reason we want with kind of lighter elements on the left side is because it has a lighter red roof color so those are kind of working in tandem together a little bit we're also going to pick a slightly more i guess gaudy fancy window design for the upper floor there now it's not quite as tall as that one on the left where you get those really large red shutters. Something a little bit iconic looking from a distance, but uh, having some nice, really white, crisp lines, I think uh, breaks that up fairly nicely. And, and just, I think overall matches the theme quite 
well. You can see these other two buildings also have a higher roof line than the first row home. I think that's a nice thing to try and do. Always want to try and get either taller or shorter throughout the build. And the next row home's kind of more of a match of the middle row home and it is going to have a lot of the similar elements that you're seeing now so we might end up cutting that a little bit of that out of the speed build today here is the door the double doors on this lower floor being constructed and you know to get the double door look you kind of have to use the back side of these doors it does kind of flip the door handle onto the wrong side um it's a, it's a minor detail um but it does bother me um, a little bit it, it's if, if you don't look at it for a while you, you, you kind of can ignore it but when you are building it it does look really strange to have that doorknob uh, suddenly appear on the inside of the door rather than the outside here we are trying to work with this porch and come up with some sort of design that works with the overall shapes of the buildings and let me tell you this is just networking so um, i'm going to quickly decorate the side of the middle row home just add some of the same kind of decorative framing elements to some windows add a door with a red kind of uh, wood element showing through to make that look a little more interesting almost like a wooden topper and we can then seal off this deck and turn it eventually into a balcony. Now, I know I said earlier I didn't really want to do too many balconies, but this is actually an okay situation. It's not interacting with the path directly. Um, it is off on its own, and it does provide a little bit of shade, which is pretty cool. Now, because we have this balcony element, I need to change the porch design and relay some of the path. And you guys know how the pathing system in Planet Coaster is. It's a little bit of a pain to do, but if you can get it to work, um, it looks pretty good. So all these buildings are gonna be enterable in different levels, in different ways. So that is um, another kind of struggle that I have to kind of put up with. You can see these grids on this path is just not lining up quite right. We are then going to increase this one up to the third floor and we can eventually knock out the walls and bring that over to the middle section. Uh, the middle row home can might use the back kind of blocked in section of the backstage area. And then the far left row home will be able to just use its floor normally. It's just a small gift shop, so I don't really plan for a massive interior there. But uh, this far right one needs to have a decent amount of floor space because we're going to have two shops up there. And uh, these are things we're probably going to work on more during Sunday's uh, live stream this week. And I hope you guys get to come in and take a look at that. Um, you can see I'm worrying a little bit more on the interior than the exterior right now. Just because the exterior is going to be very reminiscent of that middle structure. So you guys don't really need to see that quite yet. Anyways, let's go ahead, take a look at it in real time, and then you guys can give me your wonderful feedback as always. Alright everyone, here we are in real time taking a look at the first main addition to the main street here in the European kind of area, Alpine area I guess you could say, and uh, things are looking pretty good. We have a nice height change from the left uh, hot cross buns, that's the name you guys came up with during uh, Sunday's uh, live stream. We also have a nice little storefront kind of entrance here, just right along the sidewalk. So that's gonna be pretty cool to see people come and go just through this doorway. I might end up adding a door on here, uh, but that'll probably be over the uh, stream itself because that's when I do try and work on the interiors of these buildings. They are fairly large and um, uh, I, I guess I'm using the main series to do the exterior work and then live streams work on some more of the minor details and try and fill in some areas. For example, over here we have some tables, chairs, umbrellas set up in front of this plaza. And for those who did miss the stream last weekend, inside Hot Cross Buns we have some nice details, some nice wooden beams, some upper menu items up there. We got uh, some display shelves. I need to expand on this a little bit more. Um, and all these tables with some pretty little lights on it. So 
other than that, let's just go back and cover the nice little structures that we have that are new. And they are a little bit different. So, you know, some white timber framed here. This one's more of a white stone framed, uh, black stone frame with some additional brickwork. It also has that upper balcony area with some lanterns just set on the table. I think that's a pretty cool design. Uh, we have some benches in case people are waiting to be seated, things like that. The interior, we have a little bit of room. It goes up to the third floor. I do plan to have some of this stuff kind of knocked out a little bit. And then a huge seating area taking up the third floor of this building here since it's basically dead space at this point you know you, you want to try and use up all the space that you can and if i can get some vaulted ceilings in here that would be cool uh, it, it'll, it'll be tough because i had to clean out some things but uh, i think the challenge and if we can get it to look nice that's definitely uh totally worth it on my end to do so other than that uh, we have a nice doorway this building here its interior is just going to go back into this section kind of the white box ex exterior backstage area and as we progress through we'll eventually put a flat ride here which i will need your guys' suggestions on what to pick to actually place here i'm not quite sure what fits the theme the best in fact if i open up the menu um, there's a few options. Um, we can go with just uh, something generic. The the um, Aeronauts, in my opinion, always goes well with these themes. It's probably one of my favorite rides by far. Um, maybe the Tri-Storm. I kind of want one of the slightly larger flat rides here, just so we can kind of get a plaza built around it we can also arch some buildings around it as well and then as our buildings kind of expand this way the backstage area can then kind of be laid out roughly we'll also need to start working on the right side of the main street uh, get another store or two on this kind of right uh, angle area try and seal off this with some fence work there's there's just so much to do guys on planet coaster that it is becoming a little crazy we do get an update here soon that'll add fireworks and i'm interested in seeing how that works out in the park as well um but other than that that is basically covering everything that is new i will switch it over to night real quick because we did end up adding some lights uh, last weekend and it does look fairly well so this is currently what it looks like at night the lanterns on the tables really provide this nice warm glow and really this is this is what i kind of want this whole park to kind of embody this this small town very rustic feeling and uh it, it is working out for us in the long run even the plaza to the left is fully lit um, we will need to make a street light variant so we can light kind of the main pathing elements that aren't just plazas and um, I think that'll cover the lighting pretty much going forward at that point so if you guys enjoy planet coaster feel free to subscribe to my channel for more creative goodness such as this go ahead and hit that like button it's how I gauge how you guys like this game on the channel and what you want me to play and continue to play also go ahead and leave a comment down below on any ideas and suggestions and feedback is welcome so until then thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you in the next episode